Um, Cesar Baccarella, uh, founder and owner of Alpha Prime AP Regiment. I'm a part-time NASCAR driver. And two-time champion uh, racing with Ferrari in a GT3 series. And currently right now, I'm still racing part-time in NASCAR. I want to get to know a little bit more how all of this started. How did Caesar, how did Caesar's story begin? I'm first generation here born born in Garfield, New Jersey. Parents are Italian immigrants. Uh, they came to this country probably in the 50s. Um, didn't speak a word of English. Uh, father, no education. And um, went to Garfield High School uh, for two years. Um, I still only had two years in high school. Sophomore year, I, I, was, I was fortunate to finish sophomore year. So I finished sophomore year, and then in the summertime, I quit school. I had to go to work. And, been living in Florida now for say about 20 something years. Mm. Remember I came to Florida after Hurricane Andrew. So I'm interested to know, you mentioned work. Where did you get your work ethics from and your ability to be able to go to work like you said you did? Dad, I gotta give that to my dad. We moved to California when I was like five. He bought a pizzeria, a smaller pizzeria, and from there, Every day after school, you know, go to school, you don't go to school, go to the pizzeria. And you're there till 11 o'clock at night, mm -hmm. seven days a week. It's a slave job. So it's slave, yeah. Nowadays, maybe <laughs> slave labor, whatever you want to call it. But uh, to me, it was education 101. Um, how do you got to go to work? And as a kid, I was, you know, I was only five, but I was making pizza boxes at five. Um, cutting the cheese for the, the pizza, shredding the cheese, the lettuce, stuff like that. Um, making the dough for my father would make the big dough you start making the doughs prepping everything kind of pepperonis you know anything you could do cleaning um i kept myself busy all day you know with work and so i so i think it was about probably i know it was definitely six years well, was five to six years old when you started working yeah. a lot of people also don't know that even after all the suffering and the pain that your mom did you were still able to kind of turn that around forgive her and eventually to this day you still send her money um, yeah. This is a person who completely devastated you in some ways, in other ways it created who you were. How did you manage to take that pain, that suffering, and not hold the grudge so with this woman who is your mother, and still to this day continue to put that aside and continue to provide for her? Things like that, you know? Um, I right, can get emotional. Um, Going to church as a kid, you know, teaching you to do the right things, right. Um, gives you a conscience. That's one thing I think people need. And I think that's, you know, you can believe any God you want. Whatever it is, you believe God bless you, that it is what it is. But going to church, I think, gives you that conscience. And you learn, you know, by what you learn in church, to always do the right thing. You know what I mean? No matter what, you know, Jesus forgave everybody, whatever it is, there's, you know, there's no sin so big, whatever. Um, I think that my father told me that as a kid, having a conscience, and then what it did was just the love. So me, he was like, okay, my relationship with my mom is not there anymore, but there's still, I'm thankful, because what did, what did she do? She gave me life. You know, no matter what she's, whatever happens, I wouldn't be here because of her. So my gratitude to her is, I'm still gonna take care of her. The conversation's gonna be once a year at that, um, but I will send the money. I will make sure she's got a roof over her head. She's got her medicine, she's got everything. And that's the thank you I do. That's just still the thank you I'm gonna do to give back. You know, a lot of people will say, oh, fuck that, you know, no, no. Um, I know she suffers without doubt because she's not with me. Right. So she doesn't have the lifestyle that, you know, to be with me. And, and I think, but that's, people might gotta think twice about what you do, right. you know? Uh, for every action, there's gonna be consequences. Fortunately, she did what she did and the consequences were major. Right. But to today, I still respect, because I'm my dad, I can, I can, you know, I do the right thing. And then, you know, she's, she lives in Sicily, my mom. You know, to me, is my reputation, who I am and what I am is impeccable. I don't want nobody in, in life saying, oh, look, that's Caesar Baccarella's mom. Um, they know who I am in, 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 in Sicily. They know who I am. They know what you are, what I've done. 
and then my mom's not even in the street. So the best thing you do is you do the right thing, thank you, and that's what I do. I want to know the next step after this. So after you guys went through this struggle, after you seen this, do you think that some of those stories, the, the poor man's stories, do you think that that was some of the, the actual inspiration towards your desire to, or aspiration to be more? Where do you feel that those aspirations came from? I think definitely my dad, you know. Um, the way, you know, the way he kind of made me work and everything, he showed me that if there was an opportunity, you can make money. Um, but the thing is, it comes, it comes back to hunger, man. Right. You know, being hungry. Right. I mean, going, open up the fridge, and you got Wonder Bread, cheese and ketchup, you put in the microwave, and that was actually my meal. It actually tastes pretty damn good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's a kick. You know, uh, you don't want to go back there. You right. know, and then knowing there's responsibilities as a kid, you're being so responsible. I know, you know, you're getting older, you look for every opportunity to, to have that fire. And then I think being young and working, my father had, the, you know, the, uh, the restaurant, you want to succeed. And I want to, and it's something I had in my blood, I, you know. Um, I think it's something that's just tattooed in your, in your bloodline that, you know, you, you, you're, you're a go-getter. Right. You know, um, and not only that, being at the fucking bottom, you know, you can't get any worse. I remember I was at a bus stop, I was working in a factory in Jersey, fucking stuffing envelopes. Uh, and I had to get a bus, and it was fucking snowing out. There's two feet of snow outside. You miss the bus, I'm in the middle of nowhere. It's cold as shit. And, you know, you say people think of suicide. People think, I'm not going to get you wrong. There was times like, is this life? Right. I'm like, this sucks. Right. I'm like, I don't want to go through this. Right. I'm like, and I remember working at the factory. It's like the lunch truck will come by. You can't even order a fucking sandwich because guess what? You got to work two hours for a fucking sandwich, you know? So I think when you put everything together, all the pieces of the puzzle, it's like, I wanted to be somebody, you know, and... Dude, I'm not lazy. I always had that. That my father told me that fire to work, and when you know that you have that fire to work, you're gonna go get it. Right. And I think that's what he did. He, he taught me to like, you know, to be a go getter. So I think like, just my dad and everything he's done for me and what he taught me. And, but it's just the reality of being fucking at the bottom. My uncle visit me. I always visit my uncle in New Jersey. I never, he's never been here. And it was kind of like a proud moment because my uncle, he was like my second dad. You know, he was my mom's uh, father. When he took me in at the beginning, when we first got to Jersey, and then two weeks later, you know, we got our own place. But he was always to like my second dad, always treated me to whatever, you know what I mean? Always bought me that, that whatever, a ball, whatever. As a, I remember as a kid, he came down here and he's like, he started crying. He's like, what the fuck did you do? He tells me, and he's like, I'm so proud of you. He's like, I know what, from the stuff I see, but I never seen what you become. Right. He's like, this is fucking insane. Right. He's like, you, like, what you've done, you've broken every barrier. You fucked the lottery. Yeah. He's like, you, you've broken everything, every rule there is possible of, of being successful. Right. He's like, you can't use you as a success story because there's too many obstacles that you, uh, okay. you broke and encountered. And to be where you're at, and you, when you see what you have, and you saw what I have, which I don't brag about, I'm, doing, like, I'm very low profile. Um, those are proud moments for me, because I was like my second dad. Right. You know what I mean? He started crying. Is that pat in the back? That, that, yeah, that, that the dad boy, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and that to me, that was like, you know, it was a few months ago, that was a, it was good. I remember I, I sat back, and I was oh, in the car, and I, I sat in my car for about two minutes, right. you know? Those are the moments yeah. that, that you start to feel like that you've made it. Here you go and you go and you defy all odds and you go and become that animal. Yeah. Um, but some of the most rewarding things is that, having that that certification from somebody that you admire to tell you, wow, yeah. I'm impressed. That no, starts to kind of make everything all worth it. No, my, my father to this day hasn't seen me raised, you know? Right. But I think he's about to go. But I remember two years ago, he says, why do you race? Well, why do you do it? And he doesn't curse, and he cursed that day. He's like, you're fucking crazy. Why would you do something like that? And I looked at him, and I remember seeing it. I remember, I'm like, Dad, do you know what I race? He's like, yeah, Ferrari. Like, yeah. I was like, I'm getting paid. 
to get in a Ferrari, it's probably worth 750,000 to ballpark the car. To go and say, here you go, they're paying you to go on the track and beat the fucking piss out of this thing. Try to break it, you know what I mean? To me that is like, you know, and I remember, you know, I was at Texas that weekend and I'm sitting, it was a red flag, we're away and I'm sitting and I'm sitting in the cockpit, you show the buttons on the GT3 car and you, but I'll look at the, the stream wall, you got the prancing horse, the yellow, you know, prancing horse staring at you. I'm like, fuck. I'm like, I remember as a kid, I never saw a Ferrari, right. ever. Right. It was never Ferrari in my time. I never you had saw a poster. Right? I had a poster though. I had a poster. I had a poster in my, in my, uh, it was an old, the Magnum PI 328. <laughs> you know what I mean? And to me, remember, you're Italian, you're Sicilian. Right. What is the most iconic thing is, Italians are good for cars and clothes. Yep. You know, I'm gonna say food, but everybody's gonna challenge that. Um, but having that, never seen that car, never seen one in your life, and having that poster, it's admiring, you know what I mean? Right. Like everybody has, you know, kids have a picture of a uh, certain ball player, yeah. uh, Michael Jordan, this and that. I had yeah. a picture of the car. Right. Um, you manifested it. Yeah, so it was, you know, saying that, I told my dad, like, dude, they're getting paid to do this shit. You know what I mean? And to me, that was like, I told him, like, to me, that was like, that was huge. You know, and to come where I came from, and I think that's what makes you more hungry. When somebody gives you an opportunity, you see what you're able to create with opportunity, it's like, because what do you do with it? Right. Because a lot of times people have the opportunity, you, but they don't see the door opening. It passes right by. Yeah, but it passes right by. Because some, there's times in life you gotta put your balls, I tell people, it's why are you successful? You know, I'm like, it's the most fucking stressful thing in the world. No matter what I have right now, I could lose it fucking tomorrow, mm -hmm. in a blink of an eye. But I know I'll get it back. Because the way I'm built, you can take everything away from me. The one thing I, you can't take is my kids. You give my kids the fuel, fucking the rest, I'll figure it out. I can restart. You can take all the shit, I'll restart, and it'll take me two or three years, but I'll become something, you know, you, you rebuild. That's why I let people do what they want when they work for me. Right. It's like, dude, the opportunities are show, shine, bro. Right. Show me what you got. So I think it is that was being in that fucking thing in me at that bus stop in the fucking snow, I didn't have the opportunity. Right. So what was my opportunity? Hurricane Andrew. Right. It, it was there, so okay, you know, you don't say it's God, most people, God's fucking signed me because it ain't, because people got hurt, which, which was sad, you know? But, but most people would have seen that and it's said it just happened. Just had a big deal. And big no. deal. You it's were opportunity. Looking, that was that prayer you were asking yeah. for, and now here you are, presented itself, and now it's showing. Yeah. And, um, when I, and when I got here, I mean, people don't think is people think, you know, a lot of people know me like, oh, I was born with Golden Spoon. Fuck, I was born, fuck you, I was born with Golden Spoon. No fucking way. You know what I mean? Everything that I have has been earned. But it was through the opportunity that when it was given to me, you got to go 120%. When I was working, it wasn't like, okay, you won the lottery and think, okay, you inherited all this money. No, I moved into my father's garage in Florida. A little one-car garage. I put a fucking little TV in there, I put a little AC in there, and I stayed in there for almost three years, saving my money to build my first construction company to have enough money to, to say, okay, I can hire a few guys. Right. And that's what I did. But I sacrificed what? My lifestyle, mm -hmm. women, you know, cause when you're fucking 21, 22, what do you wanna do? You wanna go out and get late, right. you know? So it is what it is, guys, fuck, you wanna go party? Women, bro, right. your, your testosterone's out of peak, you know? Right. I'm the opposite. I hibernated, I work, and, that would, and that's what my father taught me. It's fucking work. So what happened, my father, you know, me seeing the opportunity now saying, okay, I'm working, I'm seeing, I'm getting all this money, you know, and I'm like, fuck, I'm like, give me more and show me what I can do. And I think that's what I did, was just every time there was an opportunity, it was like, you know, and racing came to me, it's like, I'm very successful in racing. Uh, NASCAR, you know, I'm on, I'm on racing, super proud of that. I'm um, like, somebody from fucking where I came up with like, dude, you own You went NASCAR. from racing go-karts to, to bigger cars. To bigger cars, moving up to where I'm at. You know, one championship with like silver Ferrari. And then um, owning a team. We, yeah, <laughs> I mean, our sponsors were Hugh Blow to watch. Yeah. Uh, we all know Maxim. Maxim Magazine. Like, dude, you're, you have the best sponsors in the world, you know? Um, but like I said, it's, it's everything just accumulating to that is like, from but the racing was, I think is that was like the cherry on top for me. Cause it's something I love is cars. Right. And the thing is with racing, you got to sponsor yourself at the beginning. And then, you know, you're doing that and then all of a sudden, poof, you know, I was good at it. Right. And all of a sudden you start seeing all the rewards, the reward. And now today it's like, you know, owning all, my own team. Cause I'm thinking about farming, bro. I'm getting old. <laughs> all right, what do I want to do later? I, yeah, I might be able to drive at a certain age, but guess what? I own my own team. Right. So I'm going to be in that. I still have my business, 
and I'm signing something up for later on for me, my kids, right. and the legacy you said of, of, of the future, right. you know? Um, but one thing my daughter told me, and I love my daughters, they're fucking, they're, they're definitely, I'm very proud of my daughter, Gia, she's gonna start racing now. Um, start racing trucks, um, 500 horsepower, ballpark, four speed transmission, I think he's 13. I'm proud of that, I get nervous, you know, I get nervous, you know, of course, but um, she told me, like, Dad, I don't like you racing NASCAR. I'm like, why? Because you can't win. You never win. But with Ferrari, he's like, you always, you always won. And I had to explain to her, you know, we're a B team in NASCAR, this and that. But I love the competitor. That's because she's, you know, she's ice skating. She yeah. does lacrosse. That's the, the competitor side. She wants you to fucking win. And she pushes me. Right. You know, I remember we were racing Lambo was it not too long ago. And then, like, how'd you do that? We finished third. She's like, that's it. <laughs> that's what she tells me. So, I mean, I love that right. in them, you know what I mean? Because they push me now, Correct. you know what I mean? Because they expect me, because they see how much success you've had and when they want me to win. And, right. um, and they have it in their DNA. Yeah, right? it's, in, it's in their blood, man. They're, you know, one of my daughters, she's ice skates, Gianna. She loves it. Um, and Gia is just the adrenaline fucking junkie <laughs> that gives me a heart attack all the time. But she's going to start racing. Um, and I'm, proud of, I'm proud of both of them. Right. Yeah. And you gotta have the opportunity to, you know, to do it. You know, what people, you people think people think the biggest thing about opportunity in life. The one thing I'm gonna tell you, where people are, you know, life ain't fucking Disney, bro. Right. The success story you see, people think this is Disney. They only hear the good side. The fucking good side. The fuck out of here. This is far from there. Sometimes this is your worst nightmare. Right. There's days of fucking. I thought I was gonna have a heart attack, panic attack, this and that. But that's part of being successful. It's like you put your balls on the fucking on the table and there's a fucking knife right there. You say you want to be successful, you gotta take the chances. Here's a knife, put your shit on the fucking table and get motherfucker, get what get ready because you could be successful, but you gotta take that chance. But you have to you gotta be gambling. You gotta say, you know what? Fuck it. You know what I mean? You're gonna have to you're gonna have to go, but you have to succeed, you're gonna fucking go. It gets dangerous. And there's some times where you gotta put it all in. But if you don't put it all in, you're never gonna know what you're gonna get. Right. You know? But me, I was, I was like, fuck, I came from nothing. Right. But I came from fucking. Can't, I can't go any lower. Wonder bread, cheese, and ketchup. Right. He's like, Ryan, all right, I've made it so far. Like, you know, I ain't scared of going back, you know? Because I know I'm going to make, I'm going to work back, you know what I mean? But it is actually one of my only fears is, but that is failure, you know? Because you have it in the back of your mind. But I think I come to include, like, even if I do fail, you know what I mean? With something, I'll come back and I'll, I'll regroup because you have that hunger. But it's just, I think it's coming from nothing, it's that hunger that you said, and then, and not being on, and then this is humility. You gotta be humble. You know, the one thing my father taught me, this is where I- Pretty sure you learned that from your father. Yeah. This I got from my dad. Yeah. And this is, and it comes from the Bible, comes from this and that, you know what I mean? It's, you gotta be humble. Yeah. You know what I mean? Being successful, you have to be humble. For sure. Okay, and it comes back to that, you know what I mean? You can't be jealous, you can't, miss, you gotta admire somebody that's successful. Mm. You know, you gotta have that mentor, you gotta look, look up to somebody. You know, but if everybody's successful around you, you fucking can't stand it. Like, oh, because you're jealous, motherfucker. Guess what? You're gonna be a fucking loser. Right. You ain't. You might be successful, but you're not gonna be the ultimate. You should be because guess what? You you're not that person. Right. Okay. Because there's people that are gonna work underneath you. They're gonna be part of your team. And if you have that mentality, you're gonna be mad. Like what? You're gonna be a cheap fuck. Why am I gonna pay this guy fucking 250 thousand a year, 175 thousand a year? Fuck that. I'm gonna get 125, 100. Guess what? You're not gonna get what you're supposed to get out of that guy. Right. Why? Because you're that person. Because you want everything for yourself. You're jealous, you're this and that. No, no, bro, be humble. There's only so much money. The one thing you realize when you start getting successful, there's only so much money you can spend. There comes a limit, like, okay, all right, you're there, you, you did it. You know, and then you start building a, kind of an, an, like say, an empire, you're trying to do a legacy, you're trying to do something. But there's guys that have been super successful that have gone bankrupt. You know, you see Trump had companies They'll start him, they go bankrupt, he restarts, he does this, he does that. But look at the guy now. Mm -hmm. But he don't just stop. Steve you can make fun of him, you can make fun of him. Oh, he, he, he did this, this airplane thing that went this, did this, or so. Yep. But the guy, hunger, right. and he's got pride, he's got everything, and the guy puts his name everywhere. But he's got, that's the only you gotta have pride. But the thing is, I think people tell everybody, it comes down to, but this is why my father, he was the, the, the building blocks for me. Right. And believe it or not, it's church too, you know, it gives you, you know, you gotta be humble. You know, and I think that's what 
attracts people that want to work for you or want to be part of your team. Absolutely. You know, and I think just by treating people right, you're gonna get that fucking, you're gonna build that A team. Absolutely. You know, and it, it's and it, but it all, everything goes back to I think to my dad. Absolutely. You know, or it's being hungry, being hungry too. It's like you know, you know, you had nothing to eat. You know, right. there's, there's, there's nothing less than that. that you can no. Get to. Your mother leaving you, no food, no nothing. I mean. That's the bottom it's of the fucking it's road. Up from here. Yeah, you know, some people go to drugs, some people go into this. I turned it into fuel. Right. Mm -hmm. So anything negative that happens in my in my life, I don't take it as you know what, it's meant to be. Right. Maybe what I was trying to do wasn't meant to be, and that's why this happened or this person that happened because nothing is being successful. You're gonna get fucked. I'm telling you right now, if you're gonna start a business, right, you're gonna there's gonna be people that are gonna fuck you, and it that's life. Okay. You're gonna get screwed, you're gonna have fucking dead ends. But the thing is, you get back up and you say, fuck this, I'm gonna keep going. Keep going. And I got fucked, big time. Yeah. Why, because I didn't know law. You know, now that you're fucking where I'm at now, I know every fucking loophole there is in construction. Yeah. You know, because there's guys out there that, that are in the construction industry that are, you know, that are building stuff, they know every fucking loophole and they will fuck you. Yeah. But that's the life, that's why I tell people, this ain't Disney. Yeah. You know, when you want to, but the thing is, is you know, if somebody fucked me, I'm like, all right, fuck that motherfucker. He fucked me, but what, what, you know what I did? He was a life lesson to me. Now, what he did and the loophole he found is not gonna happen again. Correct. So what do you do? You learn from A sponge, it. you learn from it, you put that on your books, don't do this ever again. Absolutely. Don't do this ever again. Absolutely. Yeah, but that's part of being successful. Right. You gotta learn that, and not get the negativity. Like, you know, a lot of people you hear is like, oh, this guy fucked me for $20,000, blah, blah, and they hold it, and they hold it, and they hold it, no. Mm -hmm. They hold the grudge, they don't learn the lesson. No, no, you learned the lesson. That, that was a life lesson. If it was one of your, whoever you lend that money to, he's like, all right, you should have known better. Now you know, next time you do something, you lend to somebody, or you do something to somebody, go put it on paper, do this, right. and you can tell them, listen, I'm gonna help you out, but right. I need to do this because of this. Yeah. But it's, it's, you know, it's life lessons. What was the next step that inspired you to start or the birth of Alpha Prime? Alpha Prime within the umbrella of all the division that it has underneath it. What started Alpha Prime? Where did it come from, the name? The gym. The gym. Working out in the gym with my old um, good friend of mine, uh, trainer Dave, and working out. And I remember, you know, you got a little bit, me, I'm bigger on top, you know, and the clothes used to fit me like boxing, and I hated that. Um, I like more of the European cut. So, you know, being successful is like, all right, <laughs> I learned through my, this is what you learn through people. Be smart, listen, observe the success of my friends that I, you know, they, you, you're diversified. So what happens, you start putting, you know, business here, business here, business there. Because there's gonna be a day, one of them can fucking fail. Or what happens with the economy, the construction takes a shit, it's down, it's losing money, but you have this part here that's making money. Then you have this part here that's making money. So I was like, you know what? I want to do something where I want to expand. I want to say, leave something for my kids, the, the legacy. Construction, you can build a fucking, I built the, the biggest fucking building in Miami, the tallest in the interiors. Nobody knows I did it. It's not my name, it doesn't have my name, I, that's not my mark, you know what I mean? So I wanted something like a fucking, like the caliber. When you get in, you fucking, you put your logo on it, like fucker, that's mine, that's, that's you know? So I want to do something with I a brand. This, I create. You create. It's all for my daughters to say, okay, you know what? They can take they can take it over one or later, you know. Um, and I was working out, I remember the clothes, and then we just started talking. I'm like, you know what? I'm like, man, we start we start my own clothing brand. Like, I want to create my own shit, and that's how you know. And then the name Alpha Prime came. Um, that took fuck. That was the company name took a long time. It took like four months. Every every name was taken, but the name I wanted something that meant something. You know, Alpha in today's society, everybody wants to be an Alpha. And alpha is not a male. Alpha is there's females that, that you know, males are leader. Mm -hmm. And prime is also today's market. You know, back in the day when your dad was fucking 40, 45, I might say he looked like shit. My dad looked like shit, but he don't look like you know I'm 46. Right. My dad did not look like me when I was 46. Right. They didn't. He didn't go to the gym. He didn't do this. He didn't. You know what I mean? He didn't know diets. You know. So I think now that you see people in the 40s like fuck this. I'm 40s and new 30s. You show me in the 50s, 50s is new 40s. Right. You show me in the 60s, people take care of themselves, mothers, you know what I mean? Um, have people just, they're more aware of like, and everybody claims they're in the prime. So now somebody could be in the prime at the 18 to, to 60. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you see a guy that's 60 years old, he's on his boat smoking a cigar, he's successful, he's like, this on my prime right now, I'm living life. No worries in the world. So that's how the name came, Alpha Prime, and that's why I put two two together. Um, and came up with that because I wanted the name to, to mean to mean something. Right. Um, and, and, I, and everything I've owned, like in my construction company, I don't have nothing with my name on it. Mm. Um, I did that. That was kind of a different approach. The reason I did Everlast was my construction company. Right. Um, I wanted to make it represent something. You know what I mean? I didn't like you know something when you have your name on it. Mm. You know, because to me, it, like it downgrades the brand. The only person I know with a name on something is Trump. That he's <laughs> taking that to the fucking right. to the extreme. But I wanted, like, even the construction ever last. What does it mean? It means whatever you're building lasts forever. Mm. So as, you know, as I do all my businesses, you know, you try to keep it. I wanted the name to, to, to mean something, to keep it more professional. Right. You know, and so when people know the brand, they know what it means. Um, how far, you know, the thing, the biggest thing is you just want to become a household name. Um, you want to, I want it to be really big. Um, it's the purpose I did it, you know, and just so when people look back at it, they know what it means, what it represents as a whole, where it's a company that it gives back in every way, which way it can, quality, um, helps people, um, it just everything about the brand, giving back to the military, um, it's just not a, just a brand, it's not one guy owner and he's, you know, some greedy guy that's taking advantage, you know, I think it's, one thing it's a family, it's kind of, you want to call it the family owned business, you know what I mean, run, whatever. Um, and I think it's just to make it a bigger family, you know. Um, the biggest thing is where you go into every store and it's there. Uh, I think that's probably the, the big data boy that I want, you know, as an accomplishment for my, to show the kids. I, kids, I think it's, that's the pinnacle of you can reach. Absolutely. When it becomes a household name everywhere, then it's like, I could say, you know, the American, true American dream story, you know? Right. Um, and show that to my kids, like, all right, now everything is possible. Right. Cause right now we're still the building blocks. Right. It's, you know, yeah, it's growing, everything is growing. It's, it's looking great. You know, we're in vitamin shops already. We're in stores, we're in gas stations. All of the military. Yeah. Military, we're in, you know, that's, I think the military thing was another big thing I was proud of. Mm -hmm. We're on military bases. Yeah. I mean, now we're gonna go on the ships. I'm like, to me, it's like, you know, I love it. Right. Cause the boys and girls out there that are doing their thing, are, you know, have our stuff. Um, but once that thing that reaches that, I think in that could, I could say, okay, it's your fairy tale of, of what you wanted to do and what I've become and being a role model. I think it's as to, I go to the end, it's, you know, you want to be that role model. Um, I can say, okay, I made it and this is what, I, you know, then leave the realms to, to, to my daughters. Right. You know, say the legacy. Okay, here you go. Uh, the day I'm gone, you know, uh, the girls get to, to keep it going. If this story of yours was wiped out tomorrow, um, how would you want Cesar Macbrother to be remembered as? The comeback. comeback. I, I, this story wipes out to, tomorrow, I'm gonna fuck. Right. You know why? Because I'm gonna come back. Right. And that's all my story, I, that's all people remember me, because I will fucking come back. Right. You know what, I'll dig deep. If I gotta go make $75 a day, I'll start doing it again. I'll fucking do what I gotta do with the kids. I'll live as humble as you can. And I will fucking, I'll be back. You know what I mean? And you're not gonna hold me down. It's just that part of my, and I'm not gonna do it. And I want everybody that's behind me to, to have the same fucking mentality, man. Um, Cause you can take materialistic things. There's one thing I, I can't control is health. You know, health and age are the two things that you're, you know, you, you need that. But uh, you can take all this away. This is materialistic shit. You know, people think that you have these fancy cars. You wipe your ass with all this shit, bro. You know what I mean? Deep down inside, when the kids run around the house, it doesn't matter if it's a fucking mansion or it's a fucking one apartment bedroom. You want everybody to be happy. You know? So that, if you give me health, happiness, I could rebuild. You know, materialistic, I said your car, bro. What happens when your car gets old? Get ready to get a new one. So something happens, I lose it all. Fucking rebuild, but I want people to realize I'll be the comeback kid. You know that's what I love about racing. You know, yeah. there's days you have your fucking bad days. You can go from the back, but fuck, you don't give up. You know, almost happened the last race. We fucking went to the back. He had problems, this obstacle. We made it back to the front, but you don't give up. Right. But the problem is, people that went to the race, 
realize, one thing they realize, guys never can ask for like, I don't realize how much teamwork is involved, how much strategy, you know what I mean? So that's the thing, it's, it's always, it's, I want people around me, i like, if that did go sour, I'll be the comeback king. That's what I want to do. Being a superhero, you know, we got to look for those opportunities, you know, and, and I think everybody's a superhero amongst ourselves, you know, and I think it's, we control our future. That's something probably what I want to leave with everybody. Like, we're all superheroes, we're all the same, we're all equal. Yeah, thanks for, you know, the data boy that you give me, I love it, but I give it right back after you, you know, from, from what you are. So when you drive home at night, you're going to, you know, think about the way Mason looks at you, how he talks to you, you know, and I think that's, that's everybody. Um, just... I think everybody, you know, in life, it's like we, we, hit, we get hit with so much negativity because life is tough. Uh, it's really hard nowadays, you know. Just, if you see an opportunity, you want to do it, go for it. Don't be scared. You go and reset, you know, uh, and do the right thing. I think that's exactly how Caesar Black is going to be remember. Yeah. I want to thank you on behalf of myself and the rest of our team for the opportunity that you granted us. So thank you for the opportunity to be here, sit at your home, and have yeah. this heart-to-heart. -heart. I look forward to more of these. All right. Thank you. Yep. <laughs>